And now I wanted to give you a little more information about the mitotic spindle, which in this beautiful photograph is shown in green. The mitotic spindle is made up of microtubules. And you might remember from your study of the cell structure that microtubules are part of the cytoskeleton. And during mitosis, they help to separate sister chromatids. They grow out of a region of the cytoplasm called the centrosome. So just this special region of the cytoplasm out of which the mitotic spindle is growing, this is the centrosome. You can't see it, it's just a region of the cytoplasm. But in animal cells, there are these structures called centrioles in each centrosome. So this is just a pair of like little cylinders made out of microtubules. They're not in plant and cells, just in animal cells. During metaphase, when the chromosomes are lined up in the mitotic spindle, they are attached to the spindle by kinetochore proteins at the centromere region. So this little constricted part where the sister chromatids are attached, that's the centromere, and there are kinetochore proteins attached to it, which help to attach the chromosome to the mitotic spindle. And as the sister chromatids are getting separated, there's actually a motor proteins at the kinetochore, which help to walk the sister chromatids along the uh, microtubule. Now, the microtubules to which the chromosomes are attached, so these that I'm drawing in blue, these get shorter during cell division. They get shorter to pull apart the sister chromatids. But there are also microtubules that don't have any chromosomes attached to them. I'm drawing these in red. And these get longer during um, anaphase and telophase. They're getting longer in order to stretch the cell so that it can be longer as it's going to divide its cytoplasm. Okay, so now a little bit more about cytokinesis, the division of the cytoplasm. In animal cells, um, cytokinesis is also referred to as cleavage. <laughs> it's because the cell simply gets constricted, cleaved into two. It happens because there are another type of cytoskeleton called microfilaments that form a ring around the middle of the elongated cell and the ring constricts until it cuts the cell into two. In plant cells, you have instead something called cell plate formation. Plant cells have a cell wall, so they can so easily be pinched into two. They literally build a new cell wall in the middle of the cell to separate it into two. And you can see it happening in cell plate, uh, in plant cells, the cell plate formation. Here's the side view. And there's little vesicles that deliver new cell wall material into the middle of the cell. And you get this cell wall getting built from the inside out. Now that you've learned a lot about how cell division happens, you might wonder, well, do cells continue to divide indefinitely? And no, they don't cells can exit the cell cycle and stop dividing. And when they exit the cell cycle, this is called G0. So they enter the G0 phase. Um, cells might exit the cell cycle if there's no need for new cell division. And then if the need reappears, they can re-enter the cell cycle. Some types of cells permanently go into G0. There are certain cells in your body that have such a specialized shape that it would be difficult to just cleave them in half, and so they permanently exit the cell cycle. And later, you will learn more about how cells determine when there's a need for cell division and how they control the progression through the cell cycle. The last thing I wanted to cover is how prokaryotic cells divide. So eukaryotic cells, the ones that have a nucleus and other organelles, anytime they want to make an exact copy of themselves, they do mitosis. Prokaryotes do not do mitosis. They make copies of themselves using a cell division called binary fission. Prokaryotes do not have multiple chromosomes. They simply have one 
circular chromosome. So when the cell is about to divide, this one circular chromosome uh, gets replicated. So you get a DNA replication. At the same time as the DNA replication is occurring, each of these two new chromosomes are attached to the cell wall. And then as the cell elongates, the two new copies of DNA are pulled apart. Then the cytoplasm is split and new cell wall is built in the middle. And now you have two new prokaryotic cells, each with their own single circular chromosome. So that's it. Let's do a summary of what you learned today. So you learn about uh, when do cells divide and the different types of cell division. And in a different lesson, you will learn about meiosis, the cell division that I didn't cover in this lesson. Then you learn about how DNA is packed into chromosomes then about the stages of the cell cycle and the stages of the interphase and then the mitotic phase. Then you learn that cells sometimes exit the cell cycle. And lastly, we just took a brief look at binary fission in prokaryotes. I'll see you next time.